Welcome to my webinar, To the Left, To the Left, Irreplaceable SolidWorks Keyboard Shortcuts. My name is Kaylin Helmick, and here with me is Jared Trotter. If you have any questions at any point during the presentation, please drop them in the Q&A section, um, and Jared will be answering them as we go. Today, I plan on showing you all the keyboard shortcuts I need and more. Get it? Okay. How about this? If you recognize any of the Beyonce references that I'm making, why don't you mention it in the chat? So if you recognize it, drop it in the chat. And I know it may seem a little crazy that we're doing a Beyonce themed webinar, but it's a risk that I'm taking. So anyway, the Q&A section is for questions and Beyonce references go in the chat. Let's go ahead and get started. I wanna first take a moment to introduce the company that I work for, Go Engineer. Um, we offer training and resources. We have classroom training available, although that's been delayed a little bit because of COVID, unfortunately. If you are working from home, we have online training available with over a dozen live instructor-led SOLIDWORKS classes from the convenience of your office or from your work from home office. We also have online resources available we have a comprehensive knowledge base built up from over 20 plus years of technical experience and over 2,000 YouTube videos from how to's, tips and tricks to deep dive webinars. In fact, this webinar will be posted on YouTube when it is done. And so don't feel like you have to sit there and write down all the keyboard shortcuts I'm about to share with you. Just you know, pay attention and write down maybe the ones that are super interesting to you. And then you can always come back to this YouTube video later to um, really go into those keyboard shortcuts a little bit more. There is certification available for SOLIDWORKS. I don't know if you are aware of that, but it's a great way of proving that you know what you're doing in SOLIDWORKS. And you get two free certification tests for every seat you have on active SOLIDWORKS subscription with us with over 18 tests to choose from. For example, I have received my certified SOLIDWORKS expert training certification. So it's just a great way of quickly communicating what it is that you know in SOLIDWORKS. We also offer other support and services, including technical support, um, SOLIDWORKS training, like I just mentioned, and we can also print 3D parts for you. Some additional services that we offer include hosting, PDM implementation, rendering and animations, as well as CAD automation. We have Go Engineer offices across the country. You can go to goengineer.com to find your local office. And um, I'm recommending that you go to goengineer.com because I don't know where you all live, but I'm from T Texas, just like Beyonce. So just throwing that out there. Um, I'm up from the Dallas office to be more specific. So if I'm your local um, applications engineer, definitely reach out to me and say hello. I'd love to meet you. Bullet points. Keyboard shortcuts do not make good bullet points. It looks like this, like that's that's pretty dry. I do not expect you to be able to remember those keyboard shortcuts by just seeing them on the screen like they are now. So I will be diving into SOLIDWORKS to show you how these keyboard shortcuts can be used. Um, I know that you won't be able to see my keyboard, so I will be very clear about what those keyboard shortcuts are. Let me <clears throat> Let me grab a drink of lemonade real quick. So anyway, kick back, relax, perhaps grab yourself a glass of lemonade, and okay, it is time to run SOLIDWORKS. Who runs the SOLIDWORKS? Well, I will. I'll run the SOLIDWORKS. Okay, let's open up SOLIDWORKS. And I think all the single ladies in particular will really like this SOLIDWORKS model I have open here. Um, I'll have, you know, I do have about 10 years of SOLIDWORKS experience. And I liked it so much that I literally put a ring on it. I put a ring on SOLIDWORKS. I hope you're loving these cheesy puns as much as I am, um, if you're catching them. Once again, this is a Beyonce themed webinar. So starting off, um, I am gonna start off with the basic keyboard shortcuts. A lot of the keyboard shortcuts that you use in other places um, on your computer, like the Microsoft Office products, will actually work in SOLIDWORKS. So if you're ever using a keyboard shortcut in another application, think about whether or not it's something that could possibly be used in SOLIDWORKS. So for example, Control S is a great way of saving your file. So I just press Control S to save my file and my file has been saved. 
And you might think, wow, that saved you a lot of time. You didn't have to go up and press the save button up here. Like that's not very far away. And that's the truth with a lot of these keyboard shortcuts. At first, it might not seem like it's saving you a lot of time, but once you've used that shortcut maybe a dozen times, think of how much time you've saved. And especially spread out over the course of your entire career, it could literally save you weeks or months of your time. Okay, don't quote me on that. I need someone to actually sit down and do the math. But once again, the first keyboard shortcut I shared with you is Control S. And also Control C works for copy. And a lot of people don't know this one and it's a huge time saver because, um, for example, I have these domes around these little gemstones in my ring. And I want those domes also up here uh, around my diamond. But instead of going and creating new domes, I can actually copy this dome and paste it up here. So I'm gonna do control C, C as in classy. I just did control C. And then I'm gonna click on this top surface right here and do control V to paste the dome. And we can see not only did it paste the dome, but it adjusted the size so that it worked nicely on this face that we have here. I'm gonna go ahead and add some domes elsewhere as well. Um, once again, I'm doing control V to paste. So first I did control C as in classy to copy and then control V to paste. And I know that this has saved me a lot in the past, the control Z button. If you do something that you totally didn't mean to do, you can do control Z to undo it. Z as in Jay-Z to undo those. So there we go, we've undone it. And also something I should note should mention is that recently, I think it was either this year or last year, SolidWorks introduced a feature that lets you redo something that you've undone. So in the past, you would have to just create that feature again, but now we can redo and that shortcut is control Y. And don't ask me why it's controlled Y, control Y. I have no idea why Y represents rebuild. I really don't, or not rebuild, I just uh, redo. We do. We're getting to rebuild, I promise. On the topic of rebuild, in order to rebuild, um, and that's something we suggest you do a lot anytime you notice your model is not behaving how it should, um, you can do that rebuild by doing control B on your keyboard, B as in Beyonce, control B to rebuild. But something that a lot of people don't know about rebuild is that we're only rebuilding the most recent features that we made. So for example, in this case, since we just made these four domes, it's likely only rebuilding those four domes. If we have an issue that we think kind of goes farther back than that, that is existing farther up on our feature tree, then we can do what is called a force rebuild where it will rebuild the entire feature tree instead of just the last few features. And to do a force rebuild, we do control Q is a force rebuild. So we can see that it's loading, it's having to rebuild everything that's in my feature tree right now. But it's only rebuilding this feature tree. What if I have different configurations? In this case, I don't, but what if I did? And I wanted to rebuild all the configurations. Well, we can force rebuild all our configurations by doing control shift Q. So holding down control shift Q all at the same time, and that causes a force rebuild of all of um, my features. And really, when something's just not going right and I'm really confused, force rebuild is the one that I always call when I need to make everything stop behaving poorly and start working the way that I want it to work. Another good one is shift Z to zoom. Z as in Jay-Z, just Z, just the letter Z to zoom out. So again, control Z to zoom in, just Z to zoom out. And, but what happens if I accidentally zoom in like way over here on accident? And now I've lost my ring, I can't find it. And trust me, I've lost rings before. I can fix that by pressing the F key on my keyboard to fit it on my screen. And the F key is super handy. And you might be thinking, but Keelan, I am a SolidWorks expert and I don't lose things on my screen. Well, it comes into use in other situations too. Like for example, you're working on a sketch and maybe your sketch is just off center and you want it to look nice on the center of your screen. You can press the F key on your keyboard to fit it into your screen. Also, if you're working on an assembly and you're wondering if maybe you left a bolt like way off here in space somewhere, you can also press F 
And if it zooms in on just your part like this, you kind of have a better idea or understanding that you don't have a part way off in space somewhere. Because if you did, then SOLIDWORKS would try to center the two items with each other. This next one I am crazy in love with because this is something I've struggled with in the past. And that is trying to select a transparent face. So for example, I'm trying to select the face of this diamond here, but it's not letting me. It wants me to select pretty much anything but the diamond. And that's because it's a transparent object. And in order to select it, um, you might know the trick where you kind of tilt the screen like this and then you zoom in and you try to select the face that you actually want. There's a trick that can really help you out. And that is to hold down the shift key. And then you can select those transparent faces that you need. Just like that. So that's a really handy one to know if you work with a lot of glass or other transparent objects. Another good one is um, holding down control and then pressing a number. And what that does is it changes the view that you're looking at your part with. So control one will give you a front view like we see here. Control two will give you a back view. Control three will give you a side view. Control plus Beyonce's favorite number will give you the other side view. Control five will give you a top view. Control six will give you a bottom view. Control seven, super handy, will give you an isometric view. And instead of trying to have to zoom out to an isometric view or whatever, it'll give you a perfect isometric view. Control plus two times Beyonce's number will give you the front view again. So that's a really handy one. And I actually, when I have a model like this, I actually have fun trying to like um, spin the model. So let's see if it'll do it for me. Okay, so I'm, I'm playing with the numbers and trying to make it spin. <laughs> and look at me, I'm everywhere now. Okay, that was a reference too. That might've been a little bit beyond something that someone would recognize. Um, another great one, I use this one all the time. And if you're not, then you probably should. I'm gonna go ahead and make a sketch on this plane and I'm going to make a rectangle. Oops, I accidentally exited. I'm gonna make a rectangle on this plane. And now let's say my boss walks over and says, hey, could you zoom in on one of those gems for me? So I do that, whatever, and then they walk away. Um, but now I wanna get back to being normal to the sketch. I can do control plus eight. So I'm holding down the control key and pressing eight to get normal to that sketch again. So that's a super handy one. I use that one all the time. Control plus space bar will give you the view selector. So if you don't want to try to press all those numbers to find the view that you want, you can just open up the view selector and find the correct view. Yes. So let's take a look at my feature tree now. So I have my feature tree, it's set up how I typically set up my feature tree, where my sketches are nested underneath my features. Um, this should be the default for everybody. However, in some cases, you may prefer having a flat feature tree view. And the way that we can make it flat is by pressing Control plus T, the letter T. And now we can see that our feature tree is flat. So we can see that all our sketches are not nested underneath features anymore. And if we want to put it back the way it was, we can press Control T again to nest it again. Now, this next one, if you take away one thing from this webinar, it should be this next one because it's everybody should be using this next one if you ever have multiple SOLIDWORKS files open at once. And that is Control Tab. Pressing Control Tab allows you to switch between files that you currently have open. So for example, I can go to my lemon squeezer or I can go back to my ring. And I'll tell you a little bit of a story. Um, I was doing an internship one time and my boss came over and he said, I really hope that you're using control tab to switch between your files because it's a huge time saver. And I said, yeah, of course I am. But really what was happening was I was really struggling to use control tab because whenever I tried to use control tab, this is what would happen. And it would be like an arcade game, trying to let go of the button at just the right time so the right file opens up. Like I really didn't understand how this was supposed to be more efficient. So it's important to know how to use control tab and that is to hold down the control key and then press the tab key to get to the correct file that you want. So I'm holding down the control key and I'm just tapping the tab key. 
Additionally, a great way of browsing recent documents is by pressing the R key on your keyboard and it'll bring up all the documents that you've had open recently. And in addition to that, you can pin the documents so that they stay in place. And this is truly my saving grace because otherwise I would need to dig through my computer and try to find where these files are located. And I'm not always the greatest at that. So saving my files in the correct spots. But we're gonna use control tab to get to my lemon squeezer. And why could we possibly need a lemon squeezer except to make lemonade? And that is what we'll be doing today is making some lemonade. Let's zoom in on this bracket here. And this next one, I, I feel like is a huge time saver. Um, when I learned it, I felt like I was able to make assembly so much faster. And here we have three screws that are holding this bracket into this part. And what I wanna do is I wanna add that fourth screw that's missing. And normally I would have to go to insert components, browse my computer. Like I said, I'm not the best at organization. Like why do I have all these parts here um, to find my screw? It would be difficult. So what I can do instead is I know it's the same as this screw. So what I'll do is I will hold down the control key on my keyboard and I will click and drag this screw. You have to select a piece. I'll click and drag my screw and we can see that it makes a copy of my screw. So once again, what I did was I held down the control key on my keyboard and then I used the left mouse button to click and drag the screw. I released my left mouse button and then I released the control button. And we can see that now we have a copy of our screw and we can go crazy and add lots of different copies really fast if we want to. So that's definitely an option you should check out if you tend to use the same part over and over again in a design. Let's go ahead and meet this screw in place. So how do we meet? Well, we go to the meet option up here, right? Yeah, that's not what we're gonna do today. We're gonna kind of use a little bit of a shortcut to put this screw in place. So what we will do is we will hold down the control key and we will select this face and this face. And then SolidWorks suggests the different things that I might want to do with those faces. And um, several of those options are meet. So this toolbar right here, this mini toolbar that popped up is full of meets that I can do with those two faces. I'll go ahead and add a coincident meet. And just like that, we've made it in place. We can even flip the direction, the alignment if we want to from here. And just like that, it's in place. We didn't even have to go up to meet. We didn't have to enter in all this information. We just went ahead and did it. The same can be used with more complex meets. So for example, I want this bracket to be centered on this part and right now it's not. So naturally I would choose the width meet to do that. If I select two faces from both of these parts, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my screen and grab two more faces. Then SolidWorks recognizes and suggests that I use the width meet. So I'll go ahead and let it do that. And we can see that our part is now centered within my lemon squeezer. So that is a great one to know. So where are we? Oh, if we are inserting a component, for example, if we're inserting that ring that we just made, you can press the tab key to rotate it. So it's not coming in the right orientation that we want. We can click tab to rotate it into the correct orientation that we want. So that's a handy one to know. Um, and now I think we are ready to make some lemonade. So I want to put a lemon in my lemon squeezer. And what you don't know is that I already have a lemon in my lemon squeezer. You just can't see it because it's hidden. And there is a really nifty way of making it show up again. And that is to do a shift tab. And so you need to make sure your mouse is over the component that you want to show. And then you press shift tab and then it shows the component. You can also hide it again by pressing tab while you're hovered over it. Um, like this, I can do other parts, shift tab, shift tab to make it show again. This is really handy when you're trying to create a meet. Perhaps you're making a meet, but you can't actually see an object because it's like underneath another object. You can do shift tab to hide. I mean tab, I mean, excuse me. You can do tab to hide and shift tab to show again. But you have to know where the component is in order to do that. I happen to know my lemon was sitting right here in my lemon squeezer. What if I knew that I had hidden components, but I didn't know exactly where they were? Well, there's another shortcut that's really handy for that. And it's control shift tab. 
and control shift tab will show all your hidden components as transparent and it allows you to click on the items that you want to show. So I'm still holding down control shift tab and I'm selecting the objects I want to show. And I can really feel the lemons now. I'm just praying that they won't fade away, but they won't because I'm clicking on them. So the rest faded away, but the ones I selected stayed or turned so that they are showing instead. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to drawings to show you a couple drawing examples. Here we have the lemon squeezer as a drawing and several of the shortcuts I already showed you also apply in drawings. Um, for example, I can copy this drawing view if I wanted to by doing a control C as in classy and a control V to paste it. And now we can see we have that alternate view. Well, it's the same view, but it's a copy of it. And we can also move drawing um, views around by using the arrow keys. So I can go up with my arrow key. I can go right. I can go down. I can go to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. OK, you get it, I think. And so <laughs> you can move views around that way. Um, another good one is has to do with notes. So I have a note here. And you can actually insert symbols into notes very easily by using an alt plus number combination. So for example, I'm going to hold down the alt key. And then I'm going to enter in 0176. And then I'll release the alt key. And we see that we get a little degree symbol. Let's go ahead and do this one as well. I'll hold down the Alt key, 0216, and we can see a diameter symbol pops up. Let's do the same here, Alt, 0181, and we get a Mu symbol. So there's tons of these that you can do. I just picked three to show you, but um, you can always Google and see what other Alt combinations you can use to produce symbols. I'm curious because Beyonce's favorite number is four. What would happen if I did 0444? Let's try it. So I'm holding down Alt. I'm doing 0444. Is that a number five? Did I get a number five from entering 0444? <laughs> let's try, let's just try 444. Four, four. That that might not, it might not actually do anything because you might, I don't know, you might need a zero or something in front of it. Alt 4444. Four, four. Okay. That either didn't do anything or the thing that it did was a box. So that's no fun. But one last thing I want to show you, which I think will be the biggest takeaway out of this whole webinar for you. And that is how to set up your own shortcuts or to view existing shortcuts as well. And to do that, we go to the tools tab. I'm going to go ahead and select tools. I'll go down to customize. So you might have to click this down arrow to go to the bottom of your menu and then click customize, and then we'll go to the keyboard tab. And here you can see all the existing shortcuts in SolidWorks. So for example, Control plus N will open up a new file. Control plus O will open, go to, it'll bring you to the open box. R will go to the recent documents. I showed you that one. Control plus W is closed. Control plus S is saved. Um, so if you're ever curious or wondering what um, a shortcut is for something you can always search for it and see what it does. You can also add your own in here. So for example, open drawing currently doesn't have one, but if you open drawings a lot, you might want to add your own shortcut. And I get asked this all the time, what does search shortcut mean? What does that do? And that is this little search bar up here. You can have it pop up when you type that thing into the search bar. So for example, maybe I want um, what should I pick? Do, do, do properties. Maybe I want properties to pop up every time I type Beyonce. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now when I go to my search commands, if I type Beyonce, file properties pops up as an option for what I might want to do. So definitely play with that. Once again, you go to tools to access it and then down to customize and then to the keyboards tab. And also, if you are the type that wants others at your company to learn keyboard shortcuts, you can also print this existing list or anything else that you add to it by going to this print list option here. Um, I hope that you feel like you've been awakened 
from this webinar. And perhaps maybe you're even drunk in love with SolidWorks at this point. And if you're not, well, as Beyonce would put it, I hope you still like me. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you again, everybody, for joining. Thank you.